Hey everyone, welcome back to another New World video. I hope that everybody is having an absolutely fantastic day, but most of the information I'm probably gonna be going over, most people probably already know about that, but I try really hard to only release one video per day. But if you guys would like me to release information more often or more frequently, then by all means, leave a comment down below and I will definitely take that into consideration. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the topic. There is going to be a new PTR or public test realm that will be available starting on December the 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys are watching this just a little bit prior to that, then you'll have to wait a couple more hours or so. But anyway, obviously anytime after that, then you guys will be able to participate in the PTR are if so desired I, it's not necessary and this isn't live technically on the live servers yet but hopefully in the next couple of weeks so let's go ahead and start with the winter convergence festival basically we're going to have access to increased snowfall and some northern lights and some other things that are happening around the island uh, the yeti and the winter wanderer is also coming to the land and you can participate by going to the settlements uh, where there's going to be like gifts are going to be exchanged and things like that and there's going to be different quests that are going to be available and you can actually uh, participate with the winter wanderer and collect winter tokens from different events that are going to be happening across the island and then you can turn them into the holiday shop and then you will be able to collect rare and cosmetic items if you so desire to participate in that there's also going to be winter villages the winter wanderer has set up four villages uh, to facilitate the joy and cheer of a winter convergence you can participate that in everfall monarch's bluffs weaver's fen and brightwood those are the four areas that you guys will be able to participate in those um then there's going to be different activities that you will be able to participate we kind of hinted at those just a little bit prior these there's the convergent spirit uh, celebrate the spirit of the season by giving a helping hand in decorating your favorite settlement there's going to be the lost present recovery um, you can basically um, spreading the mischief and stealing presidents all across the island and there's gleamite collecting so a bright glittering and gleaming gleamites uh, meteorites that will uh, have a multitude of colors that will fall from the night sky during the this time of year as a destructive they are as destructive as they are beautiful so kind of some neat little things that are going to be happening there's going to be changing the ice caves which will be appearing all over the island due to the winter wanderers desire for a forever winter they are snowy and ice caves yet that you'll actually hopefully find the yeti and their power to freeze up and make snowfall so check those out if you guys want to. Honestly, a lot of this stuff that I've been going over and just reading about looks really, really cool. And I can't wait for it to come live on the live servers and not just the PTR. Uh, I didn't participate in the last PTR. And I know this is probably irrelevant information, but I just didn't really want to spend that time and energy with something that I was ultimately going to never be able to um, gain any benefit from, except for just to participate in some of the stuff a little bit prior to it coming out. Uh, there's also going to be new like content overall, so new quest, and obviously going to be specifically revolving around the Winter Wonder and the Convergence Festival. So there's going to be new side story territory quests that is going to be offered in Wrestle Shores and Morningdale, and the update will introduce a new quest series associated with housing. So after you've completed the main story quest in uh, Encroaching Corruption, which is towards the beginning of your quest line anyway, you can seek out the architect um, Jill Como, something like that, near your starting settlements, wherever you guys actually started at, which will be interesting because I started in Everfall, and Everfall isn't a starting territory anymore, so that will be kind of... I'll be curious to see where I actually have to go to get this quest started. And then you're going to do further quest once you guys have actually unlocked and leveled up your progress and also your territory standing for that specific territory. There's going to be new journal categories. So there's going to be like skill product, um, progression and epic weapons and armor. Uh, just kind of gives you guys an update for different categories that you'll be able to kind of follow along with if you so desire. There's going to be new features. There's going to be expertise, which uh, the watermark system is basically just being renamed to the expertise system instead of the watermark system. And then you're going to get gy the gym sim system, which is going to be a new system to help alter the end game and div diverse the end game uh, experience up just a little bit instead of just running around collecting checks and chests and getting up your watermark or your new expertise level. 
going forward. And basically, you're going to do th ac different activities such as open world named bosses, the expedition bosses, outpost rush, arenas, erupted breaches, and other things along that. And each activity re will reward you with a different type of gypsum and can be crafted into a gypsum orb. These orbs then can be crafted into gypsum uh, casts of any weapon, armor, or trinket type. And then opening a cast will guarantee an expert expertise bump and gear of whatever type you are currently watering, uh, working on. So that's kind of nice. And again, we kind of talked about the watermark is going to be changing its name from the watermark system to the expertise system. So that's going to be a little bit different to get used to, but I'm sure it won't take too much time. And then... Um, See, lastly, they've added two new endgame uh, POIs where players can challenge themselves with different difficult content and try to progress their expertise system with the level 66 enemies and elite chess. And also starting with the PTR Mevelis in Eni Grove and the Imperial Palace or North Destiny Shrine in um, Ebon Scale have been uh, updated to level 66 as well. So that just means more places that you can ultimately go instead of just having to focus around Shatter Mountain and Merc Guard all of the time. The next thing that we're actually gonna go ahead and talk about is trade skill. Uh, that system has actually been reworked. And once you actually get to level 200 in any trade skill, uh, things will kind of get a little bit different. So you'll earn additional trade skill XP in progress, and then you'll start progressing again. And once you reach a certain marker, there's gonna be three new markers that are gonna be consistent with each trade skill. So that will be interesting to see how this all plays out. But then you'll be awarded with a container of useful items, mostly around the trade skill relevant that you're currently working on. And it will contain things like crafting mods, special ingredients, schematics, and even recipes that might be needed in that specific trade skill you are currently working on. They've also introduced a new type of reward system around equipment patterns. So equipment patterns are crafting artifacts that will enable you to craft a guaranteed gear score of 600 item with a specific appearance. Patterns required a significant amount of powerful crafting resources to create, but will also guarantee that gear score 600 item. Patterns will still uh, roll random perks and players will have a normal amount of control over the, their outcome with crafting mods and Azoth. And you'll be able to have equipment patterns. We'll have a small chance to drop from Arcana, weaponsmithing, armoring, and engineering reward caches. So if you guys wanna be able to guarantee that level 600 gear score for whatever item that you might be crafting, but last but not least, we are going to be talking a little bit about some PvP balance changes. So it was due to an issue with our initial PvP damage formula that caused a lower gear score or lower gear in general to be more beneficial in damage mitigation. So they have updated their formula. So there's a PvP damage formula, formula has been updated overall. They have adjusted for armor mitigation is calculated to use enemy gear score value instead of the average gear score value. And then they also adjusted the difference in armor mitigation that to increase the damage low levels players do to high level players and reduce the damage that higher level players do to lower level players. It kind of sounds like they're making it more of an even playing field. And then the critical damage bonuses, roughly on average, this will reduce the extra damage that they provide by a small percentage percentage but hopefully uh, this information does help you guys out if you guys are interested in trying out the ptr then it should be available here very very soon at least from the time that i'm recording this video and updating it here to youtube but if you guys enjoyed the video make sure that you guys go in and like comment and subscribe down below it would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated but until next time youtube you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it and you guys stay gaming